Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. The vanity code, one word, is Dwyer Boxing News. Same thing on iTunes. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me say life is unfair. There's certain people who just magically fill roles, right? You look at the person and you understand this person was just meant to be in this role, right? Sean Connery as James Bond, right? Marlon Brando as the Godfather, right? Usain Bolt as the world's fastest man, right? Sugar Ray Robinson, the paradigm of the charismatic boxer style-wise outside of the ring, right? Well, you know, I believe there's also that group of people who we want to root for. The person looks like they belong in a row. But deep down, all of us understand that the person doesn't quite fill it. Right now, I've read a lot of comments here online. Um, I've made videos on this guy. And I understand just based on the feedback I've gotten, just based on the strength of the conviction for his fans, that Nathan Cleverly is one of Britain's most beloved fighters. People love this guy. You know, much more than the mainstream press realizes. Right? He's a good looking guy. He really is one of the better ambassadors for the sport. He has a math degree. He's well spoken. You see his decency in interviews. Right? He just comes across as a hard-working athlete trying to make it in the sport of boxing. Right? You know, I admire Nathan Cleverly. I'm not betting on him in this fight. Right? The pieces for me just don't add up. I called Kovalev in the United Kingdom over Cleverly when Cleverly was the man with the title, right? As I look at Cleverly in the ring, knowing that he trained with Enzo Calzaghi, right? Knowing that, you know, he's working with Joe Calzaghi, knowing that he throws a lot of punches, knowing that he keeps himself in great shape, knowing that he's a good guy, Knowing all of that, I'm unconvinced. When I see him in the ring, I'm not sure if he punches hard enough, and I know he's gotten a couple of recent KOs, I'm not sure if he punches hard enough to crack an egg. When I see him in the ring and the bullets start flying, I think his game plan flies out the window. I think he goes flat-footed, he hunches over, as I like to say, with regard to him, he sprouts roots into the canvas. He doesn't move. He doesn't use his length. I just don't see the elite boxing ability. Yes, I see that he's an athlete. But it just doesn't add up for me. Right? He's 6'1", 6 6'2". But I don't see him leaning. I don't see him rolling with punches. I see him getting hit. I'm seeing crowd-pleasing shootouts, not high-level ability. Now, this is a rematch of a very close fight, a majority decision. Let me just say that Tony Bellew, who did get destroyed by Adonis Stevenson, has been fighting the much tougher competition, right? Adonis Stevenson, Ike Chalemba, 
right? Let me point out that at times I've been a Tony Bellew skeptic. I believe I picked Chalemba before the first fight. I believe I picked Chalemba in the second fight, and Bellew had his finest hour, right? But let's just say I also believe that Bellew hits harder than Nathan Cleverly. I believe that Bellew, who might not be as likable as Nathan Cleverly, right, is more of a technician in the ring. Now, Bellew's had his tough moments. I looked at a Bellew fight, Bellew against Oville McKenzie, and Bellew's getting caught, and Bellew's looking amateurish. But then Bellew made adjustments. Right? By the end of that fight, Bellew, who starts to fight very unevenly, actually had the upper hand. Was looking pretty decent in the ring. Right? The thing with Bellew is if Bellew can just get by the first few rounds, he's actually a guy who can change course. Now, I don't think you can bet this fight. I believe the casinos have priced this fight appropriately. But if I had one bet to make on this fight, right, it would be on the over. Why? Because I don't think Nathan Cleverly can knock out Tony Bellew. Right? The second bet would be on Bellew by KO. Right? I believe only one fighter has a chance of getting a KO in this fight. And I believe that that's Tony Bellew. In sum, I believe Bellew has a better chance of winning this fight than Nathan Cleverly. I believe Cleverly is going to come in and Cleverly is going to try to throw a lot of volume at, excuse me, not Bellew. I believe Cleverly is going to try to come in and throw a lot of volume at Tony Bellew. Right, I believe he's going to try to let his hands go. The problem is, in my opinion, he doesn't know how to do it. Right? Some part of his understanding of the sport, to me, is missing. Look at the Sergei Kovalev fight. Who tries to meet Kovalev in the middle of the ring and trade with him? Isn't that obviously a recipe for disaster? That's exactly what Nathan Cleverly tried to do. Now understand, according to reports, Cleverly was completely surprised by Kovalev's punching power. As you look at that fight, do you see Cleverly doing anything to avoid that punching power? Do you see Cleverly even able to take a step forward and try to hold on to, to Kovalev? I don't, I don't think so, right? In the first fight, Tony Bellew couldn't match Cleverly's volume, but Cleverly doesn't get on a back foot and back away and just highlight the volume. He's there in the trenches with a bigger man, with a bigger punch, right? Now, let me say... I know Joe Calzaghe, a fighter I have a great amount of respect for, is talking about how speed kills and how Cleverly is really focusing on his speed in training camp. Well, first off, Cleverly doesn't have the hand speed of Joe Calzaghe, right? I could train with you, same boat. It doesn't mean that I'm going to crack 13 in the 100 meters. Right? Training with Joe Calzaghe doesn't give you Joe Calzaghe's game. Right? You have to have the talent. But even with the hand speed advantage on Bellew, I don't think cleverly, and I know he's a smart guy. Right? He's smart outside the ring. I don't think cleverly has the boxing understanding to connect the dots in the ring. Right? He's a guy who seems to me to want to fight like Julio Cesar Chavez. Only he's 
half a foot taller than Chavez and doesn't have the outsized punching power. Right? He's a guy who seems to me at times to want to fight like Joe Calzaghe. But understand, Calzaghe never got hit in the face as much as Nathan Cleverly. Right? Calzaghe, when's the Calzaghe fight? You saw where Calzaghe's busted up up top. Right? Doesn't exist. Nathan Cleverly has looked busted up in fights. Looked like he was in a car crash at the end of that Kovalev match. Right? So I'm a Cleverly skeptic. Tony Bellew, by contrast, strikes me as a guy who is slowly improving all the time. Right? Did you think that the Tony Bellew, who fought Nathan Cleverly the first time, would be in the ring with Ike Chalemba for 24 rounds and hold his own as well as he did? Right? There are times in that Adonis Stevenson fight where Cleverly is, excuse me, where Bellew, where Bellew is actually looking decent in the ring. You get the feeling that if those two guys fought again, Bellew would approach the fight a little bit differently. I think Bellew's a student of the game. I think he's underrated in this fight. I'm surprised the odds have this fight evenly matched. Right? I'm leaning to Tony Bellew. If I were to play this, the first bet I would make would be the over. The second bet I would make would be Bellew by KO. Right? This way I'm covered if Cleverly, who is a fan favorite, gets a decision or takes this fight past the over. Right? But I'm also covered. If Cleverly tries to stay in the trenches against Bellew and gets blown out. Right? What I don't see happening is Cleverly coming in and keep in mind the odds have this is a 50-50 fight. I don't see it that way. I don't see Cleverly coming in and being able to blow out Tony Bellew. I just don't see it. I'm a Cleverly skeptic. Let me hear from you. What am I missing? I know Cleverly is more love than the mainstream media understands. I know he's charismatic. I know people like to root for him. But what I have found is that when you know a guy is slightly overrated, when you're operating more on hope than ability, then when that guy fails, when that guy falls off the perch a little bit, then people you know, will jump ship. There's a portion of the crowd on the Nathan Cleverly bandwagon right now that's there because the guy is popular, not because the guy is good. I believe the Bellew crowd is totally different. Right? They know that Tony's just a hard worker trying to improve his game. That he isn't blessed with, you know, top shelf natural ability that he's had to do it the hard way so you have folks literally on that bandwagon right understanding that there's work to be done that's a roll up your sleeves crowd that's a different crowd I think that's the crowd that wins this fight let me hear from you what am I missing leave your comments for me here online Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.